What if we could combine the greatness of Linux into Windows? Let's say you only have one PC. You're stuck on Windows for whatever reason, and you want some of that Linux goodness. And uh, let's explore that today, because how I use a Linux desktop is far different from a Windows one, but does it have to be that way? Could we take like a, let's say for instance, an Ubuntu install and kind of mesh it together with a Windows install? I hear me out. I know this is a bit of a Frankenstein project, but it's something that's kind of interesting to see the development of Windows and some of the things they're doing intrigues me. But let's get into it because uh, I think it's really interesting what Microsoft's attempting to do. So let's jump over to the desktop and start exploring. Now, before we get started, I do live stream over on Twitch on Monday mornings for the summer. I scale back my schedule. I'll put the link up here. Also, you can check me out after the fact if you want to check out these streams over on Chris Titus Tech Streams. But with that, let's get on the desktop and get into our Frankenstein system. Now, obviously, this is not Windows. This is my Linux desktop. The power of Linux for those Windows users that have never used it. I really enjoy just being able to go, okay, here's my browser, here's my terminal. If I need to launch multiple terminals, I can do that, quit out, all with just this hand. So it's kind of cool. I have my chat, I got my file explorer. If I need to launch multiple file explorers, I can do that. I got my music for brain food when I'm really doing some crazy editing over on my number seven workspace lab. That's how I use Linux. It's very powerful. I'm a very efficient. I use whatever's best. That's my motto. I don't care if that's Mac. I don't care if it's Windows. I don't care if it's Linux. Uh, but this is why I use it as a daily driver. It's so darn efficient. But let's get into Windows. Let's uh, click my little game icon here. You'll see my Windows desktop. Uh, it looks pretty much like yours, probably. There's a couple things that you probably noticed right out of the gate. One, I just move my start menu to the left side, but many people do this. Uh, I have this little applications menu. And this is basically integrating a Linux desktop environment into my Windows. So if I have any Linux specific applications, I could do it right here. So if I go to like all applications, I can really explore a lot of cool different things. Um, one thing about Linux that is amazing is a lot of its global keyboard shortcuts. So if I go into keyboard, you can see application shortcuts are right here. These actually do transition over in this environment, how it's set up. So if I go uh, control alt T, well, that's a good example. It launches into the Linux terminal. So kind of a cool different way of integrating, but how did this get accomplished? Let's go into that for a minute. Um, and then I'm gonna show some of the Windows tools that are being developed by Microsoft that kind of have similar functionality. So uh, first off, uh, I did launch into what's called Xming server to launch XFCE. So this is just basically a stripped down version of XFCE to create this menu, to launch into different things using that on the background. Now I don't have any terminals open and uh, if you're using WSL, which is Windows subsystem for Linux, I made a video yesterday about it. I'll link it up here. Uh, I went ahead and created a service for WSL so I can launch uh, whatever Linux application right on top of it and then simply go into it. So Xming, I set up with a couple different options. So if you're interested in this, I'm going to make a separate video about the creating of the system service, also creating Xming servers uh, and launching graphic user stuff from terminal because that's how we're doing it. But for this video, I just kind of want to lay over a broad overview for kind of just expand people's mind. So let's view the log. I launched this with a couple different things. I wanted to share the clipboard. I wanted multi-window. So if I launch multiple graphic user elements, it just kind of is reflected on the desktop. So if let's say I wanted to launch like GVim from, from here, I could actually just go into here, type like GVim, launch into that. And let's say I wanted to launch into the file manager in the Windows instance, I could also, or the Linux instance, I could also do that as well. So to get that, I did multi-window and then also AC kind of gives, it's a permissions thing. It helps a lot with, uh, actually being able to do all this. So that's how I launched the Xmean server, which is the first component, the first dependency of doing this. The second one is I created a Windows server, uh, a, a Windows service, and I called this one Ubuntu. 
So this one is kind of a, a different way of creating a service. Again, I'm going to have to create a separate video specifically going over creating Windows services as a lot of people use SC, which is a built-in Microsoft tool that was established, I think in 2008 or 2012, right in that era. And it's not quite as good uh, as the 2003 counterpart. I always say Windows hasn't really changed in two decades, and I do mean it. Uh, I'm using a Windows resource kit from Server 2003 called Serve Any and creating a Windows service using it as I didn't want to be limited by the SC function. There is also another third-party tool you could use to create a Windows service. Again, I'll create a video about that, but basically I am launching that WSL component. Let's say you didn't want to do all this and you don't care about having a prompt going. So you could easily just launch right into uh, your your command prompt right here. As you see, I have some color scheming things I probably should fix, but I have not. So let's just expand this. I'm going to just make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. I need to change out my, my prompt settings to be a little clearer here for videos. But uh, I went ahead and changed from bash to ZSH. I've already done a bunch of different Git clones. If we do like a LA, you can kind of see I've already uh, pulled in Vim. So I have all my Vim configuration into here so I can easily edit any files I want using Vim. Uh, I have this ZSH going. So if I go into like a GitHub project, let's go my Vim is a good example. You can see I'm already up to date with the master, but I could do pushes and pulls and everything directly here as I would in Linux. Uh, and this is just kind of like my basic setup on this box to where I could utilize this and still have most of the functionality of Linux. It's obviously not as pretty or cohesive as just using the Linux counterpart. This is obviously a little bit more of a superior setup, but let's say I had to use Windows and there's like Office and Outlook and Adobe Suite and things I absolutely had to have. I wouldn't have to completely leave behind my uh, Linux tools. So this is how I have it set up, but I wanted to explore a couple things real fast with what Microsoft's doing. This is obviously Windows Terminal. This is not a Linux utility, but a Microsoft one. Uh, I did a couple customizations to this. I'll probably make a video sometime in the future about it. But basically what I've done is I changed the default profile to be the Ubuntu instance of Linux or WSL. Uh, I don't like any confirmation of closing all tabs, so I turn that to false. I like it launched into maximize mode. I'm used to tiling window managers, which makes me a little more efficient. So starting everything maximized, I think is a really good way of doing it. Uh, obviously, if you're really used to the mouse and you don't mind getting carpal tunnel in your right hand like I have uh, for using a mouse for the last 20 years, by all means, you can use your little snapping tools just like you normally would. And then I changed the theme to dark. And then I added all these defaults to kind of give it that opacity acrylic look. As you see in the background, it's not the best as if it doesn't have focus, it loses some of that acrylic look. So that's kind of a bummer. But other notable things in here, not not too much has changed. This is basically the, the stock install. Uh, by no means is this a bad install. It's just kind of uh, the beginnings of the the Windows terminal. So I, I like this just fine. However, there are other things I do miss that that global hotkey that I just kind of showed from Linux. Windows doesn't really have a good way of doing this natively. Uh, the global hotkeys can be very dicey or hit and miss. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. So a lot of times I like to use auto hotkey. So if you're interested in that, go into PowerShell um, and then just download auto hotkey. You can either do it through chocolatey, like chocolatey install auto hotkey uh, is probably how I would go about doing it. Actually, I've already installed auto hotkey on this PC, but if not, you could also go through the website and just go download auto hotkey. And then from their website, you could just download and install it. This gives you that kind of global ability. You still need to write the scripts to really get that Linux functionality. So if I'm flipping through and doing all those kind of cool things with the terminal, you know, these types of things with using hotkeys to get the same functionality in uh, Windows, I actually wrote a script, uh, auto hotkey script. So let me grab that for you real fast. It's in my Synology box. So here's my hotkeys uh, that I have. You can kind of see uh, I created this using 
a hotkey, auto hotkey generator. Uh, I wanted to just kind of showcase the three main things. The rest of this is just kind of different functions that you don't necessarily need for auto hotkey. This right here is the meat and potatoes of it. I have a Windows key or, or the actual super mod key and space to open up Windows terminal, much like I do my terminals on Linux. I can do the same thing in Windows. Obviously, you don't get the cool tiling effect like we just had. Uh, I use Vivaldi as my browser. So using the super key in B or the Windows key in B would launch into Vivaldi on the Windows box. And then uh, I like to use super Q to quit out. So a lot of people know Alt F4 to quit out of a window. Instead of doing that, I always like to use super Q. It kills it. It's very simple. You can use one hand. It's not like this weird uh, combination. It's just a little more comfortable. So I like using the Windows key and Q to quit out of programs. So that's a little auto hotkey script that you can put on your startup to kind of emulate uh, the global functionalities of Linux. Uh, how I would do that is taking that script, which I went ahead and got it right here. Let's copy that. And I'm gonna actually just create this script right into the startup shell. So on Windows, you can uh, change your startup by just going shell colon startup. And then we can just paste this guy right in there. So whenever it starts up, it runs this command, which adds this little H. So then when you're in here, you can go ahead and use some of these hotkeys. So let's close out of everything and using like super, and spacebar will launch into uh, the terminal. So you could launch into it. Obviously multiple times it just kind of stacks. It doesn't have that tiling, but it still has some of the functionality. So uh, kind of a neat way of doing this. I thought I would go ahead and showcase some of this and, and call this my, you know, Winbuntu installation as it's kind of using both Linux and Windows. Obviously the base is Windows, kind of changing some things. I thought about maybe removing like the start menu and the start bar. And I thought, you know what, probably a little more minimal setup would be using the Ubuntu launcher over on the right side. I'm still kind of tinkering around with the placement of these things, but still getting most of the functionality of both operating systems all in one to kind of create like a Franken operating system. Now I will be making some more videos specifically over uh, the things I kind of glossed over, creating that Windows service. There's multiple ways of doing it, two different ways I will show, none of which will be using the SC command as the SC command has some limitations that I don't particularly care for from Microsoft. Uh, so I'll show that in a separate video. Uh, and then also kind of go into Windows Terminal, utilizing it, maximizing, um, using this type of thing. I don't particularly like Windows Terminal, but it's better than just using a vanilla command prompt or PowerShell as those uh, are way worse than Windows Terminal. So uh, Windows Terminal, obviously still playing second fiddle to like a, any pretty much terminal emulator in, in Linux, but it's a big improvement from pretty much everything we had in Windows. And then kind of going over virtual desktops a little bit. Uh, on virtual desktops, uh, I don't know, did I show that? One second, let me go back to the desktop here. Virtual desktops are kind of an interesting beast as if you click on task view, you have your desktop. And if you click new desktop, you can actually spawn multiple desktops with just different things. Let's say I have this on this desktop. You can actually just have different things going on each desktop. It's kind of a cool way to have some of the Linux function functionality or the workspace. You can even, let's say you had music on this one, you could rename it music, do that. That's kind of the functionality of uh, workspaces on, on Windows. Uh, not quite as good, the, the actual functionality of this and launching them automatically. I haven't quite found a good script to make that happen, um, but it's not, uh, not as good as obviously a, a whole tiling window manager solution would be in Linux. But with all that said, I do enjoy the whole idea that Microsoft's trying to take some of these Linux components that I love about Linux and implement them on Windows. Because whenever I go back to Windows from a Linux box, I'm always like, oh man, this is taking five times longer to do on Windows than if I just use my Linux box. So a lot of times I feel kind of gimped whenever I'm on Windows and having them develop some of these tools uh, will definitely help 
with things. Now, I, I did use Chocolate in this instead of Wingit, which a lot of people mentioned in past videos. Wingit is still in its infancy. It can barely install programs, and it's a very limited subset of programs. It can't even uninstall. It can't update. It can't do a lot of things that Chocolatey can. So uh, I haven't touched on Wingit as it's Windows' first attempt at a package manager, much like Linux has package managers. Uh, so I wanted to explain that as well. But this is my Frankenstein setup. This is, hey, you only have one box. You love Linux. You love Windows. This is the 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 beast that was created with that idea. Uh, I can't say I particularly enjoy this workflow. Uh, I definitely will not be switching from my Linux daily driver, but for you Windows users out there that want to just kind of get your feet wet with some of these ideas about Linux and how we actually operate and how uh, a lot of, you know, the people that use Linux as a daily driver are more efficient and, and faster, you can start to implement some of these in your workflow and improve your functionality uh, or, or your efficiency, I should say. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Is this just utterly ridiculous? Is this another iteration of Microsoft trying to extend Linux to only extinguish it, the three triple E's? I didn't really want to go into the politics of this. I don't think it's that. Um, but again, let me know your thoughts. And with all that, a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.